All right. Sorry about the lack of video. Yesterday, guys, I had to hang something on the wall. It was kind of a bitch to hang up. I had a little bit of a hard time doing it. But... Beautiful, right? Yeah. I'll get into that later. I can actually give like an explanation of the entire thing. Anyway, so. <clears throat> where am I? Oh, the next day. <clears throat> so, woke up the next day, did my video, which means that today I'm talking about Sakara. Sakara. Talking about Sakara. I'm talking about the Pyramid of Djoser. My notes said that the D is silent. I thought that might have been the case, but I wasn't sure. So I do believe that that's right. And of course, <laughs> Giza. I, uh... Man, Giza. <laughs> Oof. Anyway. <coughs> so... I woke up the next day at probably, I thought, about 5 or 6 in the morning, and we left to go to the first of the tombs. It's pretty early. Um, got there before anybody really got there. Amazing. So, I wasn't aware of where I was at first. <laughs> um... We went into these little tombs and got out of the van, and I looked at them, and I saw a bunch of hieroglyphs, so, you know me. <clears throat> I freaked out. It was pretty awesome. I was like, look at all the things on these walls, you know, sitting there, like, poking at them and trying to figure them all out and <laughs> so on. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time to do that, unfortunately. You know, if I had more time to do it, I probably would have been there for hours and hours and hours trying to read it all. But I got pictures of everything I wanted to try to figure out later. So, I'm good. So, as we walked up to the first tomb, there were things that were on the inside of the walls. And the things that were on the inside of the walls, they were uh, <clears throat> basically describing a physician or a doctor. And so this was like a tomb of a doctor. And my God, like, <clears throat> I couldn't believe it. All the hieroglyphs, all of the, like, all the writings and all the pictures. God. Oh. My heart skipped a beat the minute I saw all these tombs and was just, like, looking at all the hieroglyphs all over the walls. I, I just, way too much to take in first sight. <laughs> So, after my brain calmed down a little bit, I had uh, started actually like looking at the walls and piecing everything together a little bit and uh, looking through stuff. And every so often, the Egyptologist. <laughs> okay, so now I actually know the names of them, so I'm going to use the names of them. So, <laughs> the manager of our tour group, his name was Nazir. And the Egyptologist that was with us, his name was either Nemo or Nemo. I used both, and he responded to both, so I'm not quite sure. You know, the whole sounds just like, yeah, lost in translation, whatever. But super cool guy. Um, I really like that Egyptologist. I'll get into that some more here in a minute. Um, so... We started, like, going through everything, and, you know, they were following everything around, but I kind of kept holding back because I was looking at stuff. And they yelled at me because I wasn't with the tour group because I was busy looking at stuff and trying to figure it out. <laughs> it was funny. I was like, I don't want to, like, get in trouble here, but my God, I'm not done yet. So, you know, I kept trying to kind of lay myself back a little bit. 
just enough to be able to like catch up, but yeah, it didn't work. Um, <laughs> I have a million pictures of these tunes, and I think I posted most of them. Um, if I haven't posted it on Instagram, I'll do it later. So, at the very end of it, we had uh, gotten to the, like, the last part. There was this giant gray wall of hieroglyphs, and I tried my damnedest to do it as fast as I could, but I could not read it quick enough. I, you know, jet lag is so bad, and it was harsh. Um, so, <laughs> I took a picture of it, but there was one hieroglyph that was really bugging the hell out of me. So I got Mimo, and I kind of waved him over, and I was like, what is this hieroglyph? I have no idea what that is. Like, this, this, and this, but what is this? And he was like, oh, this is this. And I was like, oh. Hmm. So I took a picture of it, and I've got a couple squirrels that are fighting over there. So I took a picture of it, and I saved it for later so that I could, like, go back over it again. And we walked out, and I looked over, and there was this one tomb, and we weren't going to it. So I kind of poked my head around at it, and I looked over, and I go, hey, what's in there? And the guy looks at me and he goes, no, no. And I was like, what is it? Can I go in there? He's like, no, stay with group, stay with group. And I was like, but it's over there, and we're not going over there. <laughs> Can I go over there? He goes, no, stay with group. And I was like, all right, all right, all right, I'll stay with group. God. <laughs> so, like, I, like, started walking. And as I was walking with this, uh, with the tour group, I was, like, kind of bummed because we didn't actually hit that one because it looked like that one was super cool. It even had, like, a little plaque on it and stuff. And I was like, I want to know what's in there. But... We made it all the way back, and we got to the van, and Nasir, he looked at me, and he said, so, just to let you know, and I looked over at him, because I was, like, staring at my phone, <laughs> and I go, what's up, and he looks at me, and he goes, we're right next to a pyramid, and I look up, and the thing was huge, and I was like, how did I miss that? Holy crap. How did I miss that? So he started talking to me about, like, you know, the Pyramid of Dozer. <laughs> I just said jokes. No. I, okay. <laughs> so he looked at me and started talking about the Pyramid of Dozer. And I was, like, just in sheer awe of the size of this thing. So Pyramid of Dozer is the first step pyramid ever created. Um, it was on the inside of a complex. And I've got pictures of this complex. So I'll post a couple <laughs> as I'm talking about it. <laughs> Pyramid was really big. And thankfully, there was like little to no people looking at this pyramid at this point. And I don't think there was many people at all looking at the pyramid in any case. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, pandemic travel is awesome. Holy crap. It was wonderful. Ooh. So, about, um, I need more guava juice in my life. Mimo starts talking about, um, you know, why the pyramid exists and so on and so forth. And, you know, me, I am kind of circling around the Egyptologist, paying attention while I'm taking pictures. I'm pretty sure that they got really annoyed with me doing that, but, you know, I, as long as I can still hear them, I can take pictures and still listen to them at the same time. Um, I eventually, like, you know, he stopped explaining it, and he said, go take pictures, and so I did. And this was the first time I got shaken down for money. As I was walking around taking pictures of things, there was a stone wall and on the top of it was I think it was serpents anyway um so you know I'm trying to get pictures of these serpents and this dude 
like there was a bunch of stuff going on on the other side of it. So I thought maybe the guy was like, you know, a part of, you know, the construction or something. Turns out that all of this construction was actually where Zwahi Haas was doing something. And I wish I would have thought of that because I would have totally jumped fence and tried to go see what was over there. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, it was Sakara, and he just found those mummies and those tombs on the inside of Sakara, right next to the first step pyramid. I was right there, right freaking there. God. <sighs> anyway, so this guy starts pointing at it and says, up here, up here, better pick, better pick. And so I was like, all right, over here. And he was like, yeah. So, you know, took me upstairs and I got a better picture. And then he like, you know, got a picture with me and then I got a picture with him and, you know, wrapped me up with some thing and put me on a donkey and so on and so forth. And, you know, right. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I got to go like, you know, uh, <clears throat> find my group here. And he was like, pay, pay, pay. And I was like, oh, fuck. I just got shaken down for money, didn't I? God. So, you know, whatever. He like kept bugging me and bugging me and bugging me. And so eventually I gave him like. I don't know, 20 bucks or something, 15, gave him $15. And I was like, oh my God, just go away. So I gave him 15 bucks and I walked off. And I was like, ah, so Lance lives, Lance learns. Um, <clears throat> I uh, eventually got back to the tour group and, you know, I was like telling Danica, like, so the security guard, he started following us because or, well, he started following me. Because apparently I was the person who had no idea what was going on. And I didn't. I had no idea what was going on. Um, so he started following me around more than everybody else. Because everybody else seemed to like, you know, get the gist of what was happening. We start going over to Giza. After we get through Saqqara. And... You know, Lance's first thought is, oh my god, pyramids, right? So, first day was a lot for him to handle. Like, in general, it was a lot to take in. <laughs> Half asleep and still on a complete adrenaline rush, I totally was just thrilled to be there. I... I saw the entrance to Giza and I jumped out as fast as I could and looked around and I was like, ooh, because right next to me I could see one of the pyramids. And, you know, so they went and they got the tickets and brought the tickets to us. Um, we got up to the pyramid. They were talking about how you can go in at some point, I think I was busy going through pictures and going through notes. Wasn't really paying attention to what they were saying. But <laughs> whatever, Danica had it. When we got to Giza, I kind of freaked out a little bit. First off, there is no toilet paper in Egypt. None. It was hilarious. I I heard a lot about this, but seeing it is believing it. Um, thankfully, my family was logical and got me toilet paper to put in my backpack so that I could use it. And my God, that was a lifesaver. I carried my backpack around with me everywhere. Um, so... We got to Giza, we went in, and I saw the first pyramid, and I kind of stood there at the pyramid, and I suddenly felt like a dwarf. It was huge. <laughs> you see these things. You see them in video games. You see them in... 3D renderings, you see them in pictures, you see them in 
You see him in documentaries. Nothing, nothing compares to seeing these things literally in front of you. My first instinct was to take my hand and pull it up and look right at the pyramid with my hand because I couldn't even cover it with my hand where I was standing. And it was insane. I, uh, I kind of freaked out a little bit because the sheer mass of the thing, it was incredible. So, um, Nemo talked a little bit about it. Started talking about like, you know, on the map where we were going around it and so on and so forth. I was still staring at it like, holy shit, it's right in front of me. And eventually, he stopped talking about it, and we went up to the pyramid, and there was actually an entrance, and we gave the guy the ticket, and he told us, you know, no camera, and so on and so forth, but later said, it's okay, you can use your cell phone, and I was like, duh. <laughs> um... So we get into the pyramid, and there was literally no one in there. It was amazing. Holy crap. It was so easy to get up and down that pyramid. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't call it easy. It's a pretty steep pyramid. But it was much easier than it would have been if there were a million people there. And um, we got a couple pictures, and we got a couple of things. We got up to the top of the pyramid. Into the tomb. And I couldn't believe that it was there. Like, holy crap, it's right in front of me. There's the tomb. So, you know, looking all over walls, shining my flashlight on everything, trying to see if there was anything on the walls, anything on the inside of the tomb. The war some things written on the inside of the tomb. I'm assuming I didn't have a whole lot of time because, you know, Danica was like, there's nothing in here. Usually on the inside of tombs is scriptures written about the Book of the Dead. Um, it's some, you know, soul passing or um, how to get through the gates or, you know, how to get Anubis to let you in. Um, Toth ultimately makes the decision. Not Toth. I always thought it was Toth. I feel like maybe it's just American. It's Toth. They called it like Toth or... I don't know. Still Toth to me. Um. So... We leave, we go down into, you know, back out the pyramid. And John took a picture of me on the pyramid. Um, at some point, I'll probably have that picture to post. I don't have it right now. There were a few pictures I think John got that I wanted, and that they're probably busy. <laughs> there was a lot of pictures that, between me and him, we took a lot of pictures. Um, so we get out of the pyramid and we go to the next one. No, we actually get out of that pyramid and we go to the camels, the camel ride. Yeah. <laughs> so camels, uh, those things are a rough ride, very rough ride. Um, I got onto this camel and, you know, it was okay getting up on the camel, you know, so, you know, walking. Eventually, camel turns, and you're like, mm. <laughs> all right. So, you know, guy got pictures of me and Danica on these camels, like, you know, going through everything and getting, like, pictures of the pyramids and stuff. And uh, eventually, like, you know, 
came back. And as we're coming back, the camel like, it's hard. Like, it is not like sitting on a freaking couch. It's it's a rough ride. And uh, <laughs> watch out, they spit. Literally. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we get back up there and, you know, he stops and he tries taking the camel down. And of course, you know, getting off the camel, like the camel comes down and I'm like, Ugh! and then the camel flops on and go, Ugh! and I'm like, God, oh, I don't think I've had whiplash like that since I was driving around with my kid. <laughs> I get off the camel and I'm like, oh, you're so cool. So, you know, I try to get a picture with the camel and I can't really get him to like turn his head. So, you know, then the guy like comes up and like, you know, he's like, picture, picture. I was like, yes, picture. And he goes, okay, okay. And grabs my phone and takes a picture of me with the camel and you know, really cool camel. Um, <laughs> I got the picture with the camel and these guys were incredible. Like they know what they're doing. They took like a rock, picked up a rock, put the rock up above me. And I was like holding the rock. And then there was like another one where like, I'm like holding the pyramid. Um, yeah, these guys know what they're doing. <laughs> so, you know, that guy, he was worth tipping. I have to say, I, yeah, sadly at this point. I don't have any Egyptian pounds. That sucks. Um, we go down and go to the next pyramid. And the next pyramid, you know, you can't go into that one. But there were tombs and other things around the pyramid you could go into. So, you know, obviously Lance is like walking around, exploring everything, making sure he hits every freaking stop. Um, the pyramids were so big. So cool. I, I could not get over, like, I could have stood there for hours and hours on end, just staring at the damn things, and I knew I couldn't, but I could have. Um, I went down into these tombs and I started looking around and again, major hieroglyphs all over. And I went looking for everything I could possibly find, like no matter. I, uh, it was all just so pretty. Gorgeous hieroglyphs, everything, beautiful. And, uh, the hardest thing about going on this trip was keeping my composure. Knowing I was actually there, it was, it was rough. I was so infernally happy about it. I just, I'm like, oh my God, it's a hieroglyph. It's a real hieroglyph. Oh, yeah. No, because no. I've never actually seen one in front of my face before. It was great. Like, so great. Um, sorry. So, we get out of, like, the one other pyramid. <laughs> the last pyramid. And as we're walking back, Danica asked me if I'm ready for the Sphinx. And I look around and I'm like, Sphinx. All right, Giza. And I look around a little bit and I'm like, which is right there. And it was right below me. I could see its butt. And I was like, <sighs> she goes, coming? I'm like, yes. So we go down. And uh, take the van, go down to the Sphinx. And I get this one picture. Greatest picture I think I've ever taken of anything. You know, kind of cloudy. Um, the Sphinx was right in front of me. Right in front of me. It wasn't a picture. 
<laughs> wasn't a video game. It was right there. Yeah. I, we ended up having to go down into a temple, walk down into this temple. I, um, <laughs> jumped onto the top of the temple and started looking around. And then we went into this other side, inside of this corridor, and there it was. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> You're huge. Um, it was crazy actually seeing the thing. I um, couldn't believe the size of it. Like... I'm not even sure if I was as big as Pa. I don't think I was. So, there was a platform down at the bottom, and in order to get to the platform, it was super expensive. So, unfortunately, we couldn't get down to that platform. I was really trying hard to convince somebody to let me down there, but it didn't work. Um, the We got a couple of pictures with, you know, the Sphinx, and of course, I pulled my cards out and the very last minute thinking, you know, I totally forgot I had them with me. And, uh, pulled my cards out and got some great pictures with it. Um, I did not know, um, Mimo was saying that it was a cat. And I always thought it was a lion. So when he said that, I was like, wait, what? So, you know, immediately took my phone out, started typing something down on my phone. And he said, it's not a lion, it's a cattail. Which makes sense, because cats were huge in Egypt. And I was like, wait, that would make a lot of sense, actually, because of, you know, cats are, like, royalty in Egypt. Hey, look, a cat. It's royalty. Hey, look, we should feed this cat. It's royalty. Um, and the minute I started, like, actually thinking about that, I started looking at the back of him, and I walked around to the back, and I noticed that he was right. It was a cat tail. And the paw may have actually been a cat paw, too. So the Sphinx might not be what I thought it was my entire life. And that was really cool to me, because, holy crap, I learned so much on this trip. We got out of the area with, you know, Giza, and went to dinner at this restaurant, and... The restaurant we went to, it was really good. The food was amazing. And right next to us was a giant open window. And I could see all of Giza in the window. I was watching the sunset on Giza in that window. It was beautiful. So beautiful. I had to get a picture of it before I left. So these people were at this table, like near us. And <laughs> when they got out, I immediately got a picture. Like, <laughs> I noticed they got up. And I jumped up and went to the other side. And Danica was like, is everything okay? And I was like, fine. And I clicked the picture as fast as I could. She was like, oh. I'm like, yeah, I couldn't get the picture with those people in the way. She goes, oh, okay. So, sat down. You know. Yeah. Um, God. <laughs> gorgeous. Like, so beautiful. It was red. And gold. And the sand was reflective of the sun and God. So cool. So 
sorry. Um, I'm probably gonna do this a lot. It was, it was heavy. So, we get back to the hotel. It was pretty late. And, uh, the next day, we go to the museum. 